In this video, we will describe a method of creating microfluidic chips made of PDMS and glass. Step 1 is drying and ordering the mold. Once a mold is obtained, you can move on to PDMS chip fabrication. The first step of PDMS chip fabrication consists of preparing the PDMS mixture. Using one of our lab's digital scales, place a weighing boat on the scale, then tar the scale. Next, pour approximately 10 grams of Silgard PDMS 184 silicone elastomer base into the weighing boat. Adjust the amount of PDMS according to your design. Next, again tar the scale. You will then add drops of the Silgard PDMS 184 curing agent to the appropriate ratio desired for the PDMS mixture. In our lab, we typically use a 1 to 10 ratio, so 1 gram of the curing agent is added to the mixture in the boat. The total PDMS mass needed depends on the mold design. For your information, the mixture density is around 1.11 gram per centimeter cubed. Remove the bow from the scale and turn off the scale. Take a plastic disposable stirring rod and mix the PDMS and the curing agent together. Stir the mixture vigorously for around 5 minutes to ensure sufficient mixing between the curing agent and the PDMS occurs. You will see bubbles near the mixture's surface. Following mixing, the sample must be placed in a desiccator to evacuate and remove as much of the remaining gas trapped in the mixture as possible. First, ensure the gas line is attached. Then, remove the cover to the desiccator and place the sample in the chamber. Replace the cover and open the valve so the red valve handle is in the vertical position. Plug in the cord to the outlet to start the chamber's vacuum pump. The sample is now undergoing degassing. To prevent sample overflow, you may need to repressurize the chamber throughout the process. Do this by slowly opening the red valve and then closing once the bubbles recede. Following approximately 30 minutes or when you don't see any more bubbles in the PDMS liquid, you may remove the sample. First, unplug the black cord to turn off the vacuum. Then, slowly open the red valve to repressurize the chamber. Then remove the boat from the chamber, being sure to avoid spilling. Carefully pour the PDMS mixture into the 3D printed mold. Do not overfill the mold and try not to introduce any bubbles when pouring. Spread the PDMS equally along the mold. Preheat the oven at the correct temperature for curing of the PDMS. Traditionally in our lab, we will use a relatively low temperature of 40 degrees Celsius and will cure the PDMS in the oven for 24 hours. Importantly, the oven temperature should not be above the glass transition point for the 3D printed part material. Place the PDMS filled mold into the oven. Make sure the surface is not inclined and no bubbles have formed, especially near the channels. If there are such bubbles, you may need to empty the mold and start again. Remove the part from the oven after the 24 hour curing time. You will next separate the PDMS chip from the mold.
Use a scalpel to cut along the edges of the chip alongside the small vertical wall along the periphery of the mold. Cut along all four edges and be sure not to cut fluidic features such as channels. Next, using the scalpel, carefully peel up two adjacent corners of the chip. You will then unstick the full edge between these corners using the scalpel. Once one edge is free, slowly unpeel the PDMS chip from the mold, being careful to avoid tearing or ripping the channel. Following removal of the chip, place it on a piece of aluminum foil. Feel free to more neatly trim the piece using the scalpel. In working with the scalpel, try not to score or scratch the mold as these features will then be reproduced in future uses of the mold. You will next integrate reservoirs in your chip. For this purpose, we recommend you use a biopsy punch to core through holes into the PDMS. Choose the diameter of the punch based on the geometry of the chip. Take the biopsy punch and line the punch up vertically along the center of a channel and push down through the PDMS chip while rotating the biopsy punch at the end. Once punctured through the entirety of the chip, remove the punch and repeat as necessary for other reservoirs. If the biopsy punch does not remove the PDMS, use the tweezers to remove the PDMS plug from the punched hole. Next, the PDMS chip will be bonded to a microscope slide for use. First, ensure the chip and microscope slide are clean. In a normal and dirty lab environment, you can do this by using scotch tape to remove dust particles. Press the scotch tape along the top of the PDMS chip and then remove to clean the surface. There should ideally be no dust on the face that will be bonded with the channels. For the microscope slide, use isopropyl alcohol to apply a thin layer on the slide. Then, use a chem wipe to dry and clean the surface. The slide should be dry before proceeding to the next step. After wiping, the alcohol should dry within about 10 seconds. You will use our lab's plasma cleaner to plasma treat surfaces and get them ready for bonding. First, check the oil level of the system's vacuum pump. The oil level should be halfway through the side of the glass. If the level is lower, fill with more oil. The vacuum pump oil type is ISO VG68. Once the plasma cleaner is ready, remove the orange tray. Put the PDMS chip with the clean side face up on the orange tray. Replace the tray in the machine.
Next, place the cleaned microscope slide below the orange tray with the clean side face up. Power on the plasma cleaner machine. Apply the machine's black plastic cover with the through-ray valve closed. Ensure the cover makes good contact to seal the chamber. Keep your hand on the cover until a seal is made. Turn on the pump. Once a vacuum has been created, you can remove your hand from the cover. Wait two minutes for the chamber to be fully evacuated. Next, turn the dial for the RF level all the way to the right to the highest setting. Next, turn the through-ray valve to the medium position to the left. Do not change the dial on the top of the other valve on the black cover as it sets the ratio of oxygen introduced into the chamber. A bright violet light should be observed in the chamber. Wait 30 seconds to 1 minute. Next, turn the RF dial, the pump, and the plasma cleaner machine off. Slowly turn the through-ray valve to the right to allow airflow in to equilibrate the chamber. Once the chamber has been repressurized, the black lid will loosen and you can remove it. Next, while limiting the amount of time, remove the orange tray and the microscope slide. Place the PDMS chip on the aluminum foil with the treated exposed side still face up. Then, while using gloved hands, pick up the microscope slide. Avoid touching the treated side and place the treated side on top of the exposed surface of the PDMS chip, making good contact. If the process is done correctly, a bond is formed as soon as the two surfaces touch to ensure proper placement is used. Press the surfaces together to make a bond along the entirety of the chip. You should wait 30 minutes before introducing liquid and using the chip. Place scotch tape on the exposed PDMS surface when not in use to maintain the quality of the chip to prevent dirt and dust from getting into the reservoirs and channel. You have now fabricated a PDMS chip.